Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2023. I hope you survived 2022. I want to start something on this channel where I'm just going to talk about movies I'm excited for for this month. And this is January, the first month of the year. And usually this is where film goes to die. But recently we've had some pretty hand in gyms last year. It's kind of weird that I'm saying last year, but last year we had Scream come out in January, but we still got some stuff in here in this month and a couple of titles that I want to go check out. So without further ado, this is my most anticipated films for the month of January. Starting off the list is Megan. A brilliant toy company robotist uses artificial intelligence to develop Megan, a lifelike doll programmed to emotionally bond with her newly adopted niece. But when the doll's programming works too well, she becomes overprotected of her new friend with terrifying results. So I've been talking a lot on this channel about my excitement for Megan. This is this kind of stuff is right up my alley. You have James Wan writing and producing this film. And if you watch Malignant, then I think this is going to be up your alley. If you like the cheesy, like horror stuff that he's developed recently, I think this is going to be up your alley. I mean, they have people in Megan costumes dancing doing the Megan dance, that's what we're gonna call it. Move over Wednesday. At Universal Studios, you know, I know they're going to get a Megan house. I, I'm, at least I'm crossing my fingers that we do. They already announced Chucky going to have a house at Halloween Horror Nights in Universal Studios. So I just want Megan. But I think this film is going to be a good old time. I know there's gonna be a lot of people going in there, you know, think it is a serious movie when it's not. <laughs> the Devil Conspiracy. The hottest biotech company in the world has discovered that they can clone history's most influential people from the dead. Now they are making clones of Michelangelo, Galileo, and others for tens of millions of dollars to the world's ultra rich. But when they steal the Shroud of Turin and clone DNA of Jesus Christ, all hell breaks loose. I said in my best and worst videos of the year, which you can go check out over here, that one of my guilty pleasure movies was Pray for the Devil. And that genre of horror is my alley, you know? The whole religious aspect of horror when they mix it with the demons and the, the heaven and hell kind of stuff and the fighting and stuff. That's that's kind of cool to me. And the devil conspiracy looks bonkers. It looks crazy. Kind of reminds me of like, you know, PG Goreman, you know, Psycho Goreman kind of vibes, but a little bit more serious because, you know, you do have that a religious aspect to it, but it looks fun. You know, you got practical effects, you got uh, devils, <laughs> but it looks like a fun time. I just am crossing my fingers on this one. This one for me, it can go either way. It can go really, really bad or really, really good, or so bad that it's good. Next on the list is Plane. After a heroic job of successfully landing his storm-damaged aircraft in a war zone, a fearless pilot finds himself between the agendas of multiple militants planning to take the plane and its passengers hostage. So we have another Gerard Butler film where he's, uh, you know, talking like this. I think that's how he makes his mouth form an American accent. You know, he's, you can't say he's not working hard to do this. But this movie looks really, really generic. It looks, I hope it's funny. You know, I hope it's really cheesy and everything, but I don't think it's gonna be. <laughs> but I am anticipating it because I like Gerard Butler. I like the supporter stuff, even though the last couple movies that he's been in, I didn't really like Greenland. That was terrible. But we got Luke Cage in here. I'm still waiting for Disney to announce that his show is going to become part of the MCU because. We need another season of Luke Cage. But like I said, this looks like it's ripped out of the 80s. So hopefully it takes some of that 80s magic and recaptures it and puts it onto the screen. But I'm not really that hopeful. The old way. An old gunslinger and his daughter must face the consequences of his past when the son of a man he murdered years ago arrives to take his revenge. This is Nicolas Cage in a Western. So that's enough for me to just, you know, buy a ticket. <laughs> but there's a lot of history surrounding the production of this movie that also really intrigues me. I don't know if you guys remember the whole incident that happened on the set of Alec Baldwin's movie Rust, where somebody was tragically killed because of a malfunction of a prop gun. But that same person that was in charge of the props was involved with this film the old way. And the same kind of malfunction happened on this set. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but it did cause Nicolas Cage to walk off set for a little bit and, you know, have some issues with the production and everything. So I just want to watch this movie to see what was going on here. I want to watch so much interviews about it when it comes out because, you know, they're going to be, 
you know, doing some marketing for this film. And I know some people are going to be having some interviews. I don't know if Nick Cage is going to be doing interviews for this. I just want to know. <laughs> I want to see all the press around this stuff because that story, that unfortunate story that happened is going to be brought up again when this movie comes out. And, you know, I just want to hear. I just want to see what's going to happen. The Offering. In wake of a young Jewish girl's disappearance, a son of a funeral director returns home with his pregnant wife in hopes to reconcile with his father. Little do they know that directly beneath them is a family morgue and an ancient evil with a sinister plan for the unburned child. So technically this movie came out last year, but it's finally hitting the States this year. And I'm really liking that we're possibly getting a new type of genre now, you know, Jewish horror. <laughs> I watched the lullaby film, you know, that had some Jewish aspects to it. And then the vigil that a couple years back that I watched was really excellent. Should definitely go check that one out. But now we're getting the offering and it just looks like it's gonna be more of that, you know, Jewish, culture coming in mixing with the horror and like you know some backstory of stuff that i don't even know because you know i'm not part of the jewish community but i don't know any of that stuff but it's very interesting to me and i want to go check it out there's something wrong with the children margaret and ben take a weekend trip with longtime friends ellie and thomas and their two children eventually ben begins to suspect something supernatural is occurring when the kids behave strangely after disappearing into the woods overnight the only reason why i'm anticipating this film is because i think i'm gonna get a good laugh out of it because i saw the trailer and it don't look good. <laughs> but I'm hoping, like I said, I'm hoping I can get some laughs out of it. But I shouldn't be surprised this is January. Like I said before, this is where movies go to die. So I'm not going to be surprised that we have a throwaway horror film in this month. So um, I'll give you guys a review for this one. Let you know if it's good or not. But uh I'm, I don't have any high hopes. Snow Falls. After a winter storm strands five friends in a remote cabin with no power and little food, disorientation slowly claims their sanity as each of them succumb to a fear that the snow itself may be contaminated or somehow evil. Now, speaking of cheesy horror films in January, this film looks like it might have potential. It might be something that I am I can dig, you know. I, I don't think it's going to win any awards or it's going to be on anybody's best list come end of 2023, which is weird for me to think about. But I think it's going to be a nice, fun horror film that, you know, doesn't take itself seriously and just is, you know, just good old time, random throwaway stuff. I'm here for it. Alice Darling. A young woman trapped in an abusive relationship becomes an unwitting participant in an intervention staged by her two closest friends. So this film looks like it has the potential to be one of the good ones this year. And, you know, you have Anna Kendrick and there's early reviews out here saying that, you know, this is probably Anna Kendrick's best performance. So I'm here for that. I'm a fan of Anna Kendrick. I think she's funny. You know, I think she plays the same character in every movie. So to hear that she potentially, you know, this is her best performance. This this is something new for her got my intention missing when her mother disappears while on vacation in Colombia with her new boyfriend June's search for answers is hindered by international red tape now this is created by the same people that did the movie searching which I still haven't seen I know don't don't come for me yet but I plan on seeing that film before I watch this I know it has probably no connection to it who knows maybe it does but uh, you know I'm interested in it you know the trailer isn't entirely giving me like I must see vibes. It looks kind of cheesy. If it, if, it, if there's any advice for me to give you with this movie, don't watch the trailer. And I usually don't say that. I'm usually not that kind of person to say that like trailers ruin everything. Because most of the time, I would say like 90% of the time, there's still stuff in the movie that has been in the trailer. Even though people say like it ruined the movie. But this one. This movie missing, the trailer that they released, I think they ruined the movie for you. I think they told you everything that's going to be happening in that trailer, so don't watch it. But, like I said, I am uh, I was interested in searching, and this one is by the same people, so I'm going to give it a shot. Kids vs. Aliens. All Gary wants is to make awesome home movies with his best buds. All his older sister Samantha wants is to hang out with cool kids. When their parents head out of town one Halloween weekend, an all-time rager of teen house parties turns into a terror when aliens attack forcing the siblings to band together to survive the night. So remember when I said that uh, the devil conspiracy kind of reminds me of Psycho Goreman? 
I take that away. Kids vs. Aliens is the Psycho Goreman of 2023. If you guys have been on this channel for a while, you know I'm a sucker for practical effects, especially practical effects in this day and age, you know, in today's day and age. When they use practical effects, it gets my juices flowing, and that was probably the last time I'm going to say that. But it looks cool, it looks fun, it looks entertaining. I'm probably gonna be the only one that likes that movie if I do end up liking it. And you're gonna hear me for the rest of the year praise Kid vs. Aliens and say it's a good movie. Let's let's hope that's right. Young E, on an uninhabitable 22nd century Earth, the outcome of the Civil War hinges on cloning the brain of an elite soldier to create a robot mercenary. So one of my New Year's resolutions was saying that I was going to expand my reaches when it comes to film and watch a lot more horror films this year. So this is the first of many to come. And this one looks cool. You know, first one to start off with, you know, it's very sci-fi. I like sci-fi. I'm not really into heavy sci-fi, but I like, you know, a little bit of sci-fi and it's on Netflix. So I'll be watching it semi-free. So if it's bad, it won't hurt as much. Descendant. After crash landing on an alien planet, an asteroid miner must contend with the challenges of his new surroundings while making his way across the harsh terrain to the only other survivor, a woman who's trapped in her escape pod. So not much is known about this movie and it's kind of weird because it comes out, you know, pretty soon <laughs> this month. But the premise is pretty interesting. Sounds like up my alley, a sci-fi kind of stuff, you know, stranded on an island. So that means there's not that much stuff to, you know, mess around with the movie, just gonna be isolated with like one or two people, and then the surroundings of the element. It kind of reminds me of a movie that comes out this year as well called 65 with, uh, you know, Kylo Ren. <laughs> Very similar premise, but uh, you know, who knows? Once the trailer drops, we get more information. But like I said, as of right now, it sounds interesting. Shotgun Wedding. Darcy and Tom gather their families for the ultimate destination wedding, but when the entire party is taken hostage, till death do a part takes a whole new meaning. So we have JLo looking the goddamn same since when I was a kid. <laughs> what, what is your facial routine? I need to know. But yeah, this one looks looks funny. I, I can't I can't help but admit it looks fun. It looks like a good time. Like I said, JLo looks amazing for her age. But you know, I'm just probably just gonna buy this movie, even if it sucks, just to see on the special features if they'll have JLo say, you know, my face cleansing rejuvenating routine if it's on there then i'll just buy it just so i can know what to do because goddamn <laughs> you people a new couple and their families reckon with modern love amid cultural clashes societal expectations and generational differences so we have jonah hill looking weird as hell lately <laughs> and eddie murphy in a comedy about interracial marriages what time am I in? But yeah, honestly guys, I'm just watching this because Eddie Murphy is on screen again and we don't get a lot of Eddie Murphy movies. And uh, to be honest, the last couple of Eddie Murphy movies we've had have not been really, really good. But again, I gotta support your bro. <laughs> gotta support Eddie Murphy. And I just gotta see how Jonah Hill is holding up because he's doing some like meditation. He found some kind of different religion. He dyed his hair, looking crazy. My my chances of getting a super bad too just dwindles. By Day. Fear. A group of friends gather for a much needed weekend getaway at a remote historic hotel. Celebrations turn into terror as one by one each guest faces their own worst fear. So I feel like this movie came out last year, but it was on a different name called like Phobias. <laughs> you know, some similar premise. But uh, yeah, we get uh, fear here. And uh, I gotta watch the January Horrors, guys, because I feel like they are bad <laughs> and I just I get a kick at watching bad horror films in January I don't know call it a tradition call it me being a masochist it's probably the latter but you can be sure that I will be here giving you guys a review of fear because this looks funny guys this looks like a good time the silent forest 28 year old Anya takes up an internship in the part of the barbarian forest where her father had disappeared when she was eight years old. Her attempts to find out what happened to her father are met with reserve and hostility from the local villagers, and she slowly starts to discover something terrible. Another film that came out last year and is a, another foreign film, and like I said, I'm going to try to dive deeper into the foreign films this year, but this one looks actually pretty good, and it looks like it's going to be, you know, 
a very mysterious film, a very, you know, high elevated horror, as they would call, as the A24 fans would call. But I think anytime you have a movie, especially a horror film, set into the forest, it automatically got my attention because the forest is scary. I don't know y'all people going out there camping and doing all that stuff. You can go do it, but I'm gonna stay here in the city, okay? Dormouse. A burlesque dancer with dreams of becoming a comic book artist investigates the disappearance of a close friend. Now, I just saw the trailer of this film right before I recorded this video and I had to put it on the list. I was like, it's coming out in January. It looks cool, it looks very artsy, and I'm not really into that stuff, but the cinematography from the trailer alone has got me interested. You got Jean Grey from the X-Men movies in here, you know? How can I say no to this? And last on the list of my most anticipated films for January 2023 is Infinity Pool. While staying in an isolated island resort, James and M are enjoying a perfect vacation of pristine beaches, exceptional staff, and soaking up the sun. But guided by the seductive and mysterious Gabby, they venture outside of the resort grounds and find themselves in a culture filled with violence and untold horror. Now this film is directed by Brandon Cronenberg, who is the son of David Cronenberg, a famous director, many films under his belt, just had a film come out last year. And um, yeah, I'm really interested in this. I, you can tell that he got some of his father's like, you know, filming techniques and weirdness, because there's a scene in one in this trailer that I'm like, that's a Cronenberg film. But the main attraction here is Mia Goth. She's in another film. So you know, I got to watch it. I sung her praise and how I felt about her performance in Pearl and my favorite movies of the year. Again, you can go check that out over here. But I think she's just amazing. She's a very unique talent. You know, she's not like the typical like movie star. And for me, I just got to support anything that she's in because I think I'm just waiting for another great performance out of her. And this one looks like she's gonna go full crazy, go full me a goth and I'm here for it. And that is it guys. That is my entire list of movies that I'm kind of excited for <laughs> or anticipating for January, 2023. I can't believe the year is already starting. Again, guys, thank you for the support from last year and going into this new year. Can't wait to start doing some stuff, start doing some movie reviews, start doing some you know, breakdowns and reviews of some TV shows that are coming up. And also don't forget to check out my Twitter so you can stay up to date with my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember guys, keep watching movies.